This field day is organized by Moses in partnership with the Forever Green Initiative and the Land Institute. I'm Tessa Peters, the Commercialization Manager at the Land Institute, and I'm excited to tell you a little bit about Kernza Perennial Grain. Kernza is the grain harvested from Thinopyrum intermedium, known as intermediate wheat grass. It's been grown in the United States for the better part of 100 years as a forage grass, and in the late 80s, the Rodale Institute and researchers at USDA were investigating the potential of domesticating intermediate wheat grass as a perennial grain crop. They shared their germplasm with the Land Institute, which started a breeding program for intermediate wheat grass in 2003, guided by Dr. Lee DeHaan. Multiple rounds of selecting and intermating the best plants based on their yield, size, seed size, disease resistance, and other traits have been performed, resulting in improved populations of intermediate wheat grass that are currently being evaluated and further selected at the, at the Land Institute and by collaborators. This year, Dr. Jim Anderson's program at the University of Minnesota's Forever Green Initiative released the first finished variety. It's called Minnesota Clearwater after one of Minnesota's many bodies of water. All right, well, why don't we get started? Why don't you, uh, Don, you could start by introducing yourself. I want yourself. Carmen to go first. Okay, Carmen can go first. Uh, Carmen Fernholz uh, from Madison, Minnesota. Have uh, about a 450-acre organic farm, been certified organic since uh, 1975. Uh, and uh, I think uh, in relation to this conversation, I've uh, been working very closely with the University of Minnesota since the mid to late 1980s. I'm Don Wise. I'm a professor at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Agronomy and, uh, and plant, uh, plant Genetics. The reason that the University of Minnesota had and, and got involved in sustainable agriculture is because there was a group of NGOs in the state of Minnesota that were organizers. They organized farmers and and consumers uh, around this issue of sustainability and brought that concept into the university. So that's where I learned this idea about if you wanna move something forward like the Forever Green Initiative, you have to organize within an institution and outside that institution. Uh, we have these 15 teams that are focused on the development of new crops that fit into cropping systems. So it's not just about the crop. It's basically looking at crops as tools to put into a cropping system that can produce a continuous living cover. But one additional thing, those systems have to be economically viable. So the focus is not only on breeding and the, and the agronomics, but it's also focused on food science uh, and developing the end uses for those products. So there's, and as well as then working to develop the markets. And that's what I referred to earlier in terms of the tie to the food companies. You can have all the grain of a crop in the world, <laughs> but if you don't have a place to, to move it, get it processed and moved into the food system, um, the, the landscape change just will not, will not happen. So that's what's unique about the Forever Green Initiative. Okay. Um, what role do growers like Carmen play in the in the progression of, of crops like Kernza? So as you roll out intermediate wheatgrass, uh, it is in the early stages of grain domestication, right? Uh, the researchers don't know much about it, right? And so this is part of the organizing work, not only organizing food scientists, but organizing farmers that can work with this team, right? So Carmen is part of this Forever Green team focused on uh, the, the development of, um, of, uh, of intermediate wheatgrass as a perennial, as a perennial grain. Um, how have your partnerships with different University of Minnesota researchers influenced your farming practices? It's been just a, a two-way street, as far as I'm concerned, working with the university. And so then in 2011, uh, Don uh, said, uh, would you be interested in planting some Kernza? And I said, yeah, I'm always trying, interested in doing that. And so uh, he gave me a, 
enough seed to plant about two acres. Again, uh, not a whole lot of information on how to do it, what to do, but uh, getting, the, getting the seed and then with my farming experience, uh, planting it uh, over the next seven to eight years, we were able to gather some significant data. Some of the things that we worked on uh, and, and the researchers took it to the next level, one of them was trying to determine the optimum time for harvest. Because one of the challenges with Kernza is that as it ripens, the seed head ripens from the top on down. But by the time the bottom seeds are ready for harvest, the top seeds are starting to shatter. And so is there a, a sweet spot in there where you can harvest and minimize the shattering? But we found that the Kernza head, the grain, the seed head, uh, once it uh, curves over into an arch, appears to be ready to harvest. And uh, that's, uh, I watched it very closely last year and saw it in several different fields, this phenomenon. And then uh, because I was working with uh, uh, some of the university people, I was able to uh, work with some of the harvesting equipment that was used last fall or last August. Based on what I was looking at, it looks like uh, a recommendation that I, at least at this point, would like to make is that we look at harvesting Kernza uh, using a stripper head because it opens up the window of opportunity of when you can harvest. In other words, you could probably delay harvest even 24 hours. If, uh, if a farmer is watching this and they're thinking, I would like to work with my university, what, what are the, how does a farmer go about um, building these partnerships with universities and doing doing research on their farm. As Don said, I guess I'm an activist, but I think a farmer has to be proactive, but at the same time, open-minded. Ask the questions of the university that you want to ask. They try to be objective, and if they if if that's how they operate, I should be able to ask those questions and get the answer. So. That's the best way I can describe it. Go to the university, ask them. The other thing that Carmen and I did, right? We knew this was an issue um, in the early days of the development of uh, the Minnesota Institute for Sustainable Agriculture. That's the reason um, uh, Carmen and I led the development of the Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships. It was actually designed to put resources out into the communities where communities could have the conversation and then build the relationships between the community, individuals in the community with faculty members um, within the University of Minnesota system, right? But the Forever Green initiative is unique. So it is a unique opportunity to build these relationships between faculty the scientists, the food industry, and producers to think about how to develop um, maybe a modified model of the agriculture system that leaves more capital in communities um, uh, to, to help continue to build and rebuild the social structure in, uh, in, in rural America. Uh, I, I would love to have the Forever Green initiative and partnership with the communities across the state maybe to rethink how uh, the, this set of new crops that are being developed with supply chains associated with them can be done in a way that uh, uh, helps stabilize our, our rural communities across Minnesota and across uh, the U.S.